Hi everyone. Welcome to my Shoreline Studio. I'm Sybil Muschik and uh, Joshua Blanc is behind the camera as usual. And uh, of course he's known as the Manitou for his beautiful music. That's part of our videos. Today we're talking about notans. Now notans basically are uh, something like the yin and yang symbol, uh, the Japanese symbol. And uh, it's basically working with two colors, so everything is broken down into two colors, usually black and white. It's a really good way to get values in uh, compositions. But you can also mess with the idea of them. And uh, a few years back, I did some things for Facebook. I took a month and did a series of notans. And I just, it's just cutouts of paper in two colors. Although in the end I got a little fancier and then uh, as things progressed, I didn't flip everything. I just flipped um, certain pieces. And by flipping, I mean, if you cut something out of the black, um, our background here is red instead of white. And then you put that on the other side. So that's like the yin and yang symbol and I have most of the pieces that are visible. So here the, the uh, heart is black, cut out of the black, and then you flip it over and it becomes this part of the red. So, and then working with it over time, this is uh, getting a little fancier. And in the end, I wasn't um, flipping everything, just this one is flipped this way, this one is flipped this way. And this one is not totally flipped because some of it's cropped. So anyway, as I said, I started playing around with it. And over the month, uh, it became quite a development. And I hope, um, you know, you will try this because uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, all you need is um, scissors or uh, an X-Acto knife uh, and some uh, construction paper, maybe a pencil to do your drawing and off you go. So today we're going to be working um, with water lilies. Uh, back to our lake theme, of course. This is a drawing that we're going to do a graphite transfer of uh, onto our um, 8x10 gel plate. And this is a 9B uh, graphite pencil. Okay, and I'm just going to redraw a few of the lines just to show you, so it will transfer really nice. We'll just pump up some of these lines. And we'll work uh, in sepia tones, sort of like an old fashioned photograph. So basically you do a drawing and then you make sure that it's dark enough for the transfer. Although I have found um, even HB pencil, if you use it for shading, will transfer. It's, it's really a, a lovely process. I just put the paper down to save my hand from getting all mucky. <laughs> Which ha tends to happen around here. I get just covered in paint. So we're going to do the transfer. And I'll, for Josh's sensitive ears, I will try not to rattle the papers too much. We'll get it down really well with the Baron. This is my little Japanese tool, very appropriate, so since we're doing no tens. And get all the air bubbles out, make sure you've got a good transfer of all the lines. Of course, you remember as a printmaker that everything is in reverse. And the big reveal. If you don't want color, then uh, you use just the um, medium. This is the uh, glazing medium and or um, the matte medium. So in combination or just matte medium. So, but today we're going to be using sepia tones and I've already squeezed out some paint and we'll take our brayer 
you just want a light tone you're only toning the paper and you need to be able to see the image underneath Now once you can see it, it's good. So we're going to do it in two tones because the top tone we're going to make it look really old by using some crunkled, uh, crinkled, crunkled <laughs> <laughs> wax paper. <laughs> so ready to print, I'm using my uh, oriental paper and the smooth side and just lining it up. We will be registering it. Because we have another layer to do on here. And by registering, I mean we're just going to tape down the sheet. Take a peek at it. Oops. Always be wary of those corners. They are rounded, so sometimes they don't pick up the paint as well as we like. But we have another layer to do anyway. The next layer is going to be extremely thin because we don't want to obscure any of our drawing. Sure, this is going to be the right way. So that's looking good. All right, so the next layer, um, similar tones, of course, and we will put some medium in there to lighten it up. That's one way to, instead of adding white, which changes the color, um, just add some medium to it. Okay. Don't need quite that much. Oh, I just went to Michael's and Prince George and got some new glazing medium and then it was on sale and I forgot to get the that medium. <laughs> Next trip, I guess. We don't go up there very often. I want it to be maybe a little bit more sepia here. But very light. And just to give it a little bit of texture here. Like an old photograph that you've come across in the attic. And it has maybe a bit of yellow edges and a few mouse droppings. <laughs> well, hopefully not. <laughs> Okay, again, rearing off as much as possible. The medium will help um, keep it working longer. Okay, hold your ears, Josh. <laughs> That's not so bad. <laughs> it's not so bad, not so noisy. Wax paper uh, has a really nice, um, when you crinkle it up, has a really nice surface, so. Oh yes. And then you flip your print over again. Now if we'd done that layer uh, initially, then a lot of the white would have been showing and not much of the texture. So that's why we did it in two layers. Okay. Well, that's extremely subtle. It's there, but I don't think the camera can pick it up. 
I guess what we will do is we'll change the color ever so slightly so that you can see it. Um, maybe add a bit of um, some orange to it and just a tiny bit. We don't want to overpower anything. Start with this. That's better. You just want a slight variation. Roll that out. Well, you'll have to imagine what possibly happened to the print in this case. <laughs> It'll give it a bit of a glow. We've been getting a lot of glow lately. Um, so many forest fires around that the sun at night is very lurid. And uh, when it's setting, it reflects on the water as bright red. It's beautiful and eerie at the same time. And of course, there's all the smoke too. Today is not too smoky, but bad enough. Okay. Now, who are we going to... I think that would be better. Of course, you could use a stencil in this case, you know, if that has a nice pattern. But it, it, it has got to be subtle because you don't want to obscure uh, the beauty of the water lily. Although this particular water lily is an invasive species on our lake and we, in our canoe trip last time, uh, it's moved another third of the lake. Ooh, that is lovely. I think now everybody can see it. Yeah, perfect. Now what we're going to be doing is, um, now I have one to show you. And we're going to be using black paper. And this is a cutout I did last night and uh, it took me forever because this is tag. But I just used my little exacto blade. It's you know fairly easy to do. It's very graphic, of course, as you can see, and I have it in two colors <laughs> with texture. <laughs> so, but it has to be cropped, of course, right? So, and I didn't want to crop it because then it would sort of fall apart. But that's what we're going to do next. Is um, we're going to cut um, these spaces out. And then uh, we will mount it on black paper. So that will be our uh, tutorial for today. And since this cutting business is tedious and time consuming, uh, we're going to put some music on for you to enjoy. Um, one of uh, Josh's latest um, compositions, the white water lily. What, what did you call that one? Yeah, what did I? <laughs> water lily too, wasn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, there's two of them. There's one for the yellow water lily and one for the exotic one. So, yeah, I have my little exacto blade. Uh, this is a scotch cutter, I guess. And you know, of course, that you can take the end off and then uh, get a new blade, which is a good idea. There we go. All right. And keep that out of harm's way. So now we start. Um, start from the top and uh, you just have to cut some of these chunks out. Um, because this is very delicate paper, be careful. It can be done, of course, with uh, scissors. And I will probably resort to scissors um, at some point. You could save all the pieces uh, and, you know, do a negative of all this, but it is kind of a pain. And there we have our first piece.
So I've cut out most of the negative spaces around, uh, that's all the shapes around the things you can name, the lily and the lily pads. Just got one little cut left to do here. And then we'll show it mounted on the black paper. And sorry, just stuck in a corner. Sometimes little scissors help a lot for the corners and you're not crunching things. And there we are. Now we're just going to uh, cut this and then we'll put it on the black paper. So there you have it. That's our water lily, um, sort of antiqued a little bit and uh, certainly an interesting process. Uh, you might want to have a little um, like a nail trimming kind of scissors on hand for those edges, but for the most part it works. And I just want to point out how beautiful the graphite transferred and how it gives you the shadows and you could even uh, put more shadows on um, to give it even more clarity. So try this at home as usual and um, join us again for another adventure here at Shoreline Studio. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and your families in these terrible times and things are getting better and do lots of art uh, that helps everything. So have a good time with us. Bye for now. And you know, of course, that you can take the end off and then uh, get a new blade, which is a good idea. If it comes off. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. And that out of harm's way. Put this back. And I guess we'll be fiddling with it for a bit. <laughs> uh, okay, how does this go? This way? Oh yeah. Alright. So now we start.